It is September 13th, 2022, and you're watching The Code Report. Last Friday, I made a video about Firebase alternatives, and you guys were quick to let me know that I left out a very important project called Pocketbase. Well, I tried it out, and it kind of blew my mind. As soon as I landed on the homepage and saw this cool proximity hover effect where the eyes follow your cursor, I was sold on it. At first glance, it looks very similar to Supabase, something with a real-time relational database, authentication, file storage, and so on, that's built entirely with open source software. Unlike the godfather Firebase, which requires proprietary Google software. It looks like other bases at first glance, but it's actually very different under the hood, and I think it has the potential to be the ultimate side project backend. Let's go ahead and compare it to something like Supabase. The first thing you'll notice is that it's written in the Go programming language, as opposed to TypeScript for Supabase. That's mostly superficial, but things in Go do tend to be faster. It also uses Svelte for its admin UI, while Supabase uses React and Firebase uses Angular. That's totally meaningless, but just kind of interesting. For client-side SDKs, it supports JavaScript and Dart, which means it's usable on web, desktop, and mobile. What's really interesting about Pocketbase, though, is the database. Instead of something like Postgres or MySQL, it directly embeds SQLite into the executable and runs it in wall mode which stands for write-ahead logging. My initial thought was you can't use SQLite in production, but actually that's a misconception. SQLite is an underappreciated option for small to medium-sized projects. Surprisingly, in wall mode, it actually outperforms other relational databases, especially in a read-heavy app, and I'm sure it'll work perfectly fine for your side project that's destined to fail. But in the off chance it doesn't fail, you might be wondering, does Pocketbase scale? Because the database is embedded into the runtime itself, it can only scale vertically. This differs from NoSQL data databases like Firestore that use sharding to scale horizontally to an infinite number of machines. When scaling vertically, the only way to handle more traffic is to use a bigger computer. As the app grows, you'll need to add more CPU and more RAM, but you can only do that for so long. Like the biggest computer you can rent on AWS has a 128 CPU cores and about 2 terabytes of RAM, and the rent is about the same as a Bay Area studio apartment. In any case, scaling vertically will work for 99% of apps out there. Pocketbase can easily handle tens of thousands of concurrent real-time connections on a single $5 VM on DigitalOcean or something like that. Which brings me to the next point, Pocketbase is entirely self-hostable. In fact, you have to self-host it. Whereas most people using Supabase are using its fully managed $25 a month service. And it's also been criticized for being extremely difficult to self-host. Like you've got eight different services to think about here in the Docker Compose. If anybody here is self-hosting Supabase in production, please leave a comment and let me know how it went for you. What's really unique about Pocketbase is that it results in a single executable, which makes it very simple to deploy. Another important difference is that when it comes to backend code, you can just extend the framework directly with Go. Then that code will be right there in the executable right next to your database. In other words, you build a monolith, as opposed to a bunch of different microservices that run on fancy edge functions. In fact, an architecture like this tends to be faster than the edge when data fetching is involved, as I proved in this video with Flat Earth Science. I think the bottom line here is that Pocketbase is like a lightweight Supabase alternative, which itself is the open source Firebase alternative, which itself is the alternative to building your own backend from scratch. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.